Hello everyone, welcome to MBBS classes. Myself Dr. Hanifa. Today in this video, I'll be talking on parenchylosis of ear. Parenchylosis of the ear, this disease is also known as acute localized bacterial otitis externa or other name is circumscribed otitis externa. So since today's topic is on the parenchylosis of the ear, let us see what is a parenchyl. So parenchyl is an abscess or a boil. It is a walled off collection of pus. The definition of parenchylosis of the ear is that it is a circumscribed or localized lesions which is caused by the acute bacterial infection of the cartilaginous portion of the ear canal and it appears as an extremely tender pimple in the outer part of the ear canal. So you can see here these are the otoscopic pictures showing the different stages of the parenchylosis of the ear. So if you see here there is a parenchyl in the posterior uh, upper part of the external auditory canal which is also causing the inflammation in the adjacent conchal area. So if you see here this is an uh, parenchyl and when the parenchyl it progresses it uh, changes to the um, pus pointing stage. Yes? So this is an otoscopic picture of the parenchylosis of the ear. Now the question is why the parenchylosis of the ear it is affecting only the lateral part of the ear. The reason is the hair follicles are found only in this lateral part of the external auditory canal and in this lateral part also we get the uh, sebaceous glands and in the bony part there is no hair follicles and there is no sebaceous glands that is why the parenchylosis is a disease which is found only in the lateral part of the external auditory canal now let, let us see the pathogenesis of the parenchylosis of the ear it is seen that after the local mechanical trauma, like due to the self-cleaning of the ear or whenever there is a contamination of the ear canal due to the dirty water while swimming and all, then if there is a local trauma due to the ill-fitting hearing aids, it leads to the obstruction of the hair follicles and the glandular duct which are present in the lateral part of the ear canal. Following this happens the staphylococcal infection of the phyllosebaceous glands which leads to the development of parenchylosis of the ear. Now let us see the clinical presentation of the parenchylosis. The main clinical presentation which the patient present is the earache. And earache is an early symptom. The character of the pain, they, it will be localized in the ear and ear will be painful to touch. And due to the pain, the patient, they have difficulty in chewing whenever there is a jaw movement. As the swelling in the ear canal increases, if you see here, this is a uh, parenchyl in the external auditory canal and as the swelling increases and it occludes the external auditory canal, it leads to the development of feeling of an oral fullness and hearing problem also develops. So in the early part of the disease, the first is the appearance of the nodular swelling and later on it proceeds to a stage of fluctuation and once the Parenchyl it discharges, the patient will have an history, uh, will present as the additional ear discharge. Now, let us see the examination findings of a case of the parenchylosis of the ear. So, when you examine the patient on inspection and palpation, will on inspection will get that there is an inflamed swelling in the lateral part of the ear canal, as you can see in this figure. In some of the cases, when the it progresses to a stage of fluctuation, then there may be a pus pointing on or an active discharge coming out from the parenchyl. Then when you inspect the ear canal, you will notice that the erythema and the edema is localized only to the outer ear canal and the deep meatus is normal. Then on palpation, we get the tragal tenderness and the tragal tenderness is elicited by, if this is the tragus, and when we press this triggers and or when we pull the spina upward and backward, the patient will complain of pain. So the trigger tenderness is present. Then if the parenchyl it discharges, then we may get an additional finding of purulent ear discharge or we may get an additional crust and squamous debris due to the dried up discharge. Then if we are able to examine the tympanic membrane, so the tympanic membrane will be normal. There may be a presence of additional regional lymphadenopathy. We may get the lymph nodes 
in the preauricular region, infraauricular region, and the postauricular region. Sometimes, when the furuncle is involving the posterior canal wall, because the furuncle can occur in all the walls: anterior wall, superior, posterior, inferior wall. When the furuncle is involving the posterior canal wall, then the inflammation may involve the postauricular sulcus, and in that. in this situation it becomes a diagnostic issue because clinically it may mimic acute mastoiditis so as you can see here in this picture the postauricular region there is an inflamed area of the postauricular region and the pinna if you see the position of the pinna it is outward and forward now if we are if we are getting a case of the furuncle in the posterior canal wall and when we are not able to visualize the tympanic membrane then we have to rule out the mastoiditis now let us see the some important differentiating points which will help you to clinically differentiate between the furunculosis and the mastoiditis now first is the post auricular tenderness so when we in cases of fur furunculosis when we pal look for the tenderness in the post auricular region the whole of the area will be diffusely tender but in cases of mastoiditis the maximal tenderness will be found at the mastoid antrum area then is the we have to look for the postauricular sulcus in cases of furunculosis involving the posterior canal wall as you can see here in this picture the postauricular sulcus is obliterated if you see here the sulcus cannot be appreciated and there is a fullness of the postauricular sulcus but in the mastoiditis this postauricular sulcus is maintained next is the position of the pinna so in cases of furunculosis the pinna will be moved out forwards as you can see here but in cases of mastoiditis the pinna is pushed downwards and forwards in cases of furunculosis when we do the palpation of the tragal area the tragal tenderness will be present in furunculosis whereas it will be absent in case of mastoiditis there will be presence of regional lymphadenopathy in cases of furunculosis but it is not so in cases of mastoiditis and last is the help of radiological investigations like x-ray mastoids in furunculosis there will be a clear mastoid air cells whereas in mastoiditis we will get a cloudiness or the opacification of the mastoid air cells so sometimes the differentiating between the furunculosis and the mastoiditis may be helpful in the during your clinical postings now let us see the differential diagnosis of the furunculosis of the ear sometimes the various diagnosis various disorders can produce the similar clinical manifestations so it could be the foreign bodies in the ear canal or if there is a otitis externa which is accompanying the chronic suppurative type of otitis media in that case it may mimic the clinical picture of furunculosis of the ear and lastly is the tumors of the external ear can also mimic the furunculosis of the ear complications of the uh, complications due to furunculosis of the ear are not that common but in rare situations what may happen is the development of cellulitis in this case what happens the abscess in the ear canal may involve the surrounding soft tissues like the areas like infraauricular region or the preauricular region may be involved then when the infection it spreads to the cartilage it can lead to the development of perichondritis and in cases of patients who are immunocompromised like diabetic patients it can lead to the severe infection the diagnosis of furunculosis of the ear is mainly clinical but whenever we get a case of furuncle in that case we have to send the in pus for culture and sensitivity and to do that if there is a pus pointing present the cent the purulent center of the lesion or the pus pocket can be opened with a small blunt a small needle and the pus can be sent for culture and sensitivity then if a patient is giving a history of recurrent furunculosis in that case uh, rule out diabetes now coming to the treatment part the main treatment modality for the furunculosis of the ear is the debridement of the ear because it helps in the clearance of the infectious organism it helps us to clean the 
debris or the discharge and the crust which is which gets accumulated in the ear canal and this debris it becomes a food for the saprophytic fungus and lastly due to the debridement of the ear canal it allows the topical ear drops to reach the target tissues now if the ear canal edema is is severely compromising the lumen in that case the packing of the ear canal has to be done and the packing is done with the antibiotic contained ointment strips next is the after the debridement and the packing when the ear canal edema reduces then the patients are advised the topical antibiotic and the steroid ear drops analgesic has to be prescribed because it is an extremely painful condition of the ear and lastly if there is a patient presenting to you with the pus pointing of the furuncal in that case the incision and drainage is done to drain the pus and this can be done under local anesthesia systemic antibiotics are not needed in all the cases but we have to prescribe the systemic antibiotics in certain conditions like in cases of severe infections in cases of complications due to the furunculosis like uh, cellulitis perichondritis and if the patient is diabetic with this i come to an end of this video thank you for watching this video